Good morning. Good morning. It's early. I have a road trip today. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all the different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. It is Super Bowl Sunday. Touchdown! And I'm gonna say something which will probably get a bunch of people to give us a hate comments oh down no, below. Oh what? I don't care about the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, I don't think that that's necessarily strange. I think that especially if your team is not even in the Super Bowl, you're I don't you're like not professional it. sports because a lot of here we go. A lot of the players aren't they're in it for the money, and then once they get their money, they don't play as hard. That's why I like high school sports so much. That's another subject, but. I'm not going to be able to watch the Super Bowl anyway because I'm going on a road trip. Where are you going, sir? To I have Disney World? no idea. I'm going about an hour and a half north of Disney World. I'm going with John Paul and Michelle for Ginny's first field hunt. Yeah, it's like a hunt test that they mm -hmm. have to do. So we practiced when Michelle and I went up to like Tallahassee Panhandle area, Quincy, right. Florida. Um, but now is the test. This yes. is not a drill. This is the actual thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's what I'm doing today. So we figured we would just kind of turn on the camera, give a little intro vlog, and, and if I get some footage, we can turn it into a vlog of Joe. Now, I have no idea what the, what the eating situation is going to be like today because I'm going to be going with John Paul and Michelle, and I can't be like, well, we need to go here, or, hey, we need to stop because I have special dietary restrictions. I don't want to do that to them. So I am bringing a maple pecan keto brick with me. That's and a I thousand calories. Worst case, this would get me through the entire day. Yeah. And it's good clean ingredients. I really love keto brick. I love Robert and Crystal. Me too. There's a link for these down below. Um, we don't have a discount coupon. They don't do discounts, but they're really, really good. And again, at less than seven dollars for a thousand calories of really good quality ingredients. Nowhere else. It comes back to like how much nutrition are you getting for your dollar, and you really can't beat that. Like on the road, I'm gonna go to McDonald's. It's gonna cost me more than six dollars, and I'm certainly not gonna get the same quality of nutrition that I'm gonna get out of this. So right. That's a good thing. But I wanted to mention before you head out for church, since it is Super Bowl Sunday. I know you don't know a whole lot about football and sports in general. I know Anthony's having a potty here. Yeah, so you get to eat good because Anthony's making a brisket. Or, I know. Or Dad is making a brisket and Anthony's going to finish anybody. it off. I put it go. on for him last night. I taught him how to trim one out. Hey, finishing the game is the most important. In fact, it's how you finish, right? right. Finish well. Well, here's what I wanted to mention. So I started thinking this morning about football and... Who's the most important player on a, t on a football team? Can you tell me? Who generally wins the MVP Is of the, the Super Is it the quarterback? Bowl? It's the quarterback, right? That's what some people will say. It's the quarterback. So let's say we are the quarterback in our journey here. Not in Two Crazy Ketos. I mean you, right? You, the person who is on this proper human diet You're lifestyle journey. You're the quarterback journey, of your, right? your own life. The quarterback is only as good as his offensive line. Now, do you know what the job of the offensive line is? Is that to attack the other no. people? What do they do? The offensive line. I seriously line, do not know. You really don't. I don't. You have the center, okay. which is the guy who hikes the ball to the quarterback. All right, okay, I know that person. Then you have your guards, Okay. and you have your tackles. So the guards are right next to the center, and then you have your tackles next to them. So you have seven guys. Uh-huh. Okay? Because then you have a couple guys on the outside, too. 
The most important is that offensive line, those five guys in the middle, okay, the guard, the center, and the tackle. Their job, after the center hikes the ball, is to protect the quarterback. So that he doesn't get So sacked. that he has time to throw the ball. Yeah, so he, you know a football team. Okay, all right. right. So he has time. Because I'm a Florida to... girl, and we had Dan Marino, and but he had been sacked like so many times, he, he was like half ma machine. But he was still only as good as his offensive line. If yeah. you don't have a good offensive line, no matter how good your arm is, no matter how good you can scramble, you're not going to be a successful quarterback. And so my point is, while you're on this keto journey, on this lifestyle, as you know, whatever you're doing, whether you're doing keto or carnivore or proper human diet or any any combination, you have to surround yourself yeah. with people that are going to help protect you in this because it's a rough world out there. Most people out there are eating the pro or eating a standard American diet, and they're telling you sugar good, carbs good, fat bad, and you get beat up. And we need to surround ourselves. And you may not have that person in your life. You may not have a community in your personal life like that you can reach out and touch. But you have an amazing online community well, with Two Crazy Ketos. It's kind of interesting. Nobody that is playing on a Super Bowl team, for the most part, they're not related. Right. I mean, everybody on the quarterback's offensive line lives in another family. That's right. But when it comes to game time and that quarterback being successful, yeah, they're all in. So I think that that is, should be encouraging. If you don't have a partner who's also doing keto, or maybe you don't have parents or you don't have kids that are doing keto, it's okay that you reach for people for your personal offensive line that's outside your family. That's right. And actually, if you make somebody who is working for the sad American diet as part of your offensive line, expect injuries mm -hmm. to happen. Expect you to get knocked out every, every once, once in a while, while. the quarterback still gets sacked, even though he's got a great offensive line. So yeah. what I want you to think, moving forward, you're the quarterback of your lifestyle. Still up to you to make the decision. You've still got to make the decision of who am I throwing the ball to? Should I scramble out of here because there's nobody open? We're going to be your center. We're going to, we're going to hike you the ball. We're going to help you. And then look in our community online. If you don't have people, if you don't have you know people in your personal life, a spouse or a brother or a sister or a best friend that's doing this with you, go into our Facebook family group. You have people like Shauna and Matreya and Renee. I mean, so many, too many people to even name. They're going to be your guards and your tackles and they're going to protect you and they're going to guide you along. So I just, I want you to know you can't do this alone. Don't try to do this alone. The quarterback can't win the game by, by himself, himself, right? <laughs> he needs a team. And not only does he need his team that he's on the field with, his offensive team, but he needs his defensive team to do their job too. So you can't do this yourself. And I want you to know that you have an entire team around you to help you in your journey. Well, plans have changed. Um, I was on my way up to John Paul and Michelle's house. They live about an hour and a half north of us. And I just got a phone call from John Paul that Something happened with the hunt competition and Jenny's first heat was supposed to be at 3 p.m. And now it's in three hours and they live two and a half hours away from where the competition is. And I'm still about 45 minutes to an hour away from them. So, you know, we were supposed to be all driving up together. I was going to meet him at their house and then we were going to drive up there together. And that's what I was looking forward to. I was looking forward to being able to just spend some time with my son and my daughter in the car, just kind of talking and laughing, you know, that family for us is precious. It's the most important thing. So I was really looking forward to that, but I also want Jenny to be able to get to the competition. And if they wait for me to get to them, she's going to miss, you know, her first heat. So they're going to head on up and I'm going to go home because it's silly for me to drive four hours by myself to see her, I mean, it would be nice to see her do her hunt, but it was really about family time for me. 
So we're going to plan something again in the future. She's got some more competitions coming up, and I think a couple of them are actually a little bit closer. We're also planning on taking her down to that water park that I took Tabitha to because, again, she loves the water. But this is just a reminder that sometimes we have to adapt to change. You know, sometimes things come up, you know. Maybe you make plans that you're going to eat a certain way and then you decide at the last minute you have to go out or you go to a party and we have to adapt to that change. Maybe instead of being carnivore, we have to be ketovore. Or if there's nothing to eat, we just decide we're gonna fast and figure out what is our priority. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go home and uh, I'm gonna help Anthony finish up uh, that brisket because he's never done a brisket on the smoker before. And honestly, smoking a brisket is super easy. It, it's really about time and patience. So, you know, briskets take a long time. On average, you're looking at between 10 to 16 hours, depending on what temperature you're smoking it at. So we put it in last night uh, around nine o'clock at 170 degrees. That's gonna pick up all the smoke flavor. And then this morning before I left, I wrapped it in aluminum foil boat that preserves the bark on top should be done somewhere around two o'clock or so, but now I can at least help him to make sure it doesn't overcook and that kind of stuff. But we're gonna continue this vlog anyway. And uh, even though we don't normally vlog on Sundays, since we started it, we're gonna go ahead and finish it. So I'll show you guys what we eat later on today. So since I'm home today, I'm gonna go ahead and make some chili. This is gonna be a really busy week. I've got a lacrosse game tomorrow on Valentine's Day. I have two on Tuesday. Plus I have a whole bunch of cutting and everything else going on. So keto chow chili is a thing that's a staple for us because it's a great meal prep. We can eat it just as chili or we can put it on top of hot dogs or hamburgers or something. So I had actually already defrosted a whole bunch of ground beef and a package of pork. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and render down the bacon and we're just gonna put the bacon into a cast iron pot. We render it down, get it a little crispy and then we start adding in all of our meats and stuff. Now the other thing I'm gonna do since I'm home is make up some bacon, especially since the smoker is going and I have a smoke box on the side of it. So since the smoker is going, I can just get that smoke to go into the smoke box to add the smoke flavor into the bacon and I don't have to waste a bunch more pellets to smoke the bacon that I've already got cured. So if you remember right, about three weeks ago, I began curing a bacon. I've got this one right here. It's three quarters of a slab of pork belly and it's been just curing for the last three weeks. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up, dry it off and then get it into the smoke box. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get it out of this vacuum seal bag. And what I try to do is just split across the top because there's gonna be a lot of curing juices in here and I don't wanna get them all over the counter. So we can just kind of take this and then go get rid of this. And we're gonna put this on a counter. Now, one of the ways you're gonna know your bacon is cured properly is by touching it. So when you go ahead and touch in different various parts of the meat, it should be very hard. So when you first get your pork belly out, it's a very soft piece of meat but the curing now has made this very hard and you should also have this really pretty pinkish reddish color. And you're gonna see the same thing over on the side. And this, I mean, again, it's been curing for three weeks. So this is just a perfectly cured bacon. So what I'm gonna do is this is kind of an optional step. You can go ahead and take this and just kind of wash off a little bit of the brine and then we're gonna dry it before we stick it in the smoker. Okay, now that I've washed off the brine, I'm just gonna take some paper towels and I'm gonna go ahead and get a lot of this extra moisture off. Just try to get it as dry as possible. Now the next thing I need to do is make sure I take a look at the grain for when I go ahead to slice it. So you have it this way, but really the better place to cut it is this way. You can see all of that meat like that. So I wanna make sure that as I'm curing it, when I bring it back out to slice, I remember which side to cut it on. So what I like to do is just put like a little angle piece down on one side so that I now know that I'm gonna be slicing it this way. 
So you're gonna have the slices going this way. So some people like to take their cured bacon and put it on a drying rack and stick it in the refrigerator overnight to let it get that nice cure on the top and really dry out. But personally, I have found there's not a big difference. And some people are gonna argue with me, but in my experience, I've never noticed a huge difference in the final product of the bacon. So we're just gonna go ahead and take this and stick it right into the smoke box. So while we're out here, let's go ahead and take a look at this brisket. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. It's developing a nice bark here on top. That is doing really well. I think we're at about 190 degrees. So we still got a while to go. So over here is the smoke box. And the way this works is the Rectac actually takes all the smoke from cooking and it puts the smoke in here and then it comes out that top chimney. So this is at a much lower temperature. So you can see here, the top's at about 120 degrees and the bottom is at about 110. So by putting the bacon in here, it's not gonna cook. It's just gonna pick up all of that smoke flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up and you've actually got a few different positions. I'm gonna put it up on the top because that's where the smoke is for the most part. It does fill up the whole box, but it comes to the top first. So we're gonna go ahead and put the bacon on. And since the smoke, you can see down on the bottom, is coming from below it. I'm going to put it fat side up first, because that's gonna allow all of that smoke to really get in underneath the meat. And then after about an hour, I'm gonna turn it over to get the fat side. So I took the bacon out since it's all cured. And this is that little piece of pork belly that I cut off for the bacon I'm gonna cure. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw all of our meat in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in all my ground beef. And I'm actually gonna make about four pounds of ground beef. So I had these two one pound packages from our cow. And then I also had this other one, that's about a pound and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and cook all of this up. We'll have a lot of chili. And I'm also adding in a pound of ground pork. I got me to 50% off at all this. And all we're gonna do now is get this to all brown up. Now, I don't like to chop it up too much. Uh, I like to have chunks of meat. I don't want it like really soupy. So we're gonna let this cook down a little bit and then every once in a while, just come in and chop it up a little bit. So this is browning up nice. Now, one thing, you don't need to get it completely brown because we're gonna simmer this and that will also cook the chopped meat. I found in the refrigerator one yellow pepper and about a half a green pepper that somebody started using and I don't want it to go to waste. So we're gonna go ahead and just throw this in here and kind of mix it up. It just will add a little bit of texture. And now we can start adding in our broth and all of our seasonings. We can also add our bacon back in. What I like about this recipe is it's really versatile. You can change things up. You can not put vegetables in, like most of the time we actually haven't been putting vegetables in. You can add more spice, less spice. You can change up the portions of a meat that you put in there, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna go ahead and add in our beef bone broth. It calls for uh, four cups, I believe, but lately I've just been putting in like one container but I also used a lot more meat than I normally use, so I may need to add a little bit more here. But we're gonna start off with this and then see where it goes. A lot of it comes down to like how like soupy do you want your chili. I like it more hearty and less juice, so sometimes I will use less broth than uh, originally called for, but I can already tell you that I'm probably gonna need a little bit more in here because there's not a lot of liquid and I haven't added the keto shell yet, and that is also gonna thicken it up. So we are going to add in our keto chow. This is tomato basil, and I have a problem, and that is I'm out. I can't believe I don't have any left. I'm hoping, I should have two scoops. I'm gonna have to go look in the closet and see if I have any more. I'm hoping I do. So I might have a package at least of it. We'll add in our chili powder. And again, this is something else you can adjust. I added extra meat, so I'm gonna do three tablespoons of chili powder, and then we're gonna add in two tablespoons of cumin. Now I'm gonna put in a link up on the top for the actual recipe with the ratios that I normally use, but again, I'm just kind of winging it today, especially because I'm using about two pounds more meat than I normally use. When it comes to adding a sweetener, if you wanna add a sweetener, start off low, give it a taste, after you get it really well mixed, you can always add more, but you can't take away. 
And I want it to have like a good spice, but then that sweet note at the very, very end. So that is really good, but it still needs to incorporate a lot more flavors. I feel like I may even add a little bit more chili powder, but I'm gonna simmer it for a little while and see how the flavors develop first. So we're gonna put it to the lowest possible heat setting and just let it simmer for a while. That'll help it to cook down. We'll get rid of some of the extra water and all the flavors can infuse into the meat. Okay, since I'm home, I'm gonna go ahead and do another meal prep and we're gonna make some yogurt. Now we have a couple of videos on how to make yogurt. Uh, one of them is a full fat version and the other one is a low fat version. So I'm gonna leave a link for the low fat version one right up here and then down in the description, I will put a link to our full fat version. What I'm gonna tell you is if you wanna make the full fat version, follow the instructions for the low fat version, but then use the ingredients for the high fat version. I know that sounds really complicated. The reason that is, is when we came up with our original recipe on how to make the high fat version, where we were basically trying to duplicate peak yogurt, it's a really, really fatty yogurt. Um, after we did that, we discovered you can eliminate a couple of steps. So when you make the low fat version, there's a lot less steps, but you can use the same ingredients for the high fat version and it's just a little bit easier. So for this yogurt, you need two ingredients, that's all you need. You need some Fairlife milk, and the reason we use this is because it's 50% less sugar, and then you need a starter yogurt. And this is what I'm always gonna recommend, I've already opened it. Get the Fahe 5%. The reason we like this is because I like the cultures that are in here. This is gonna give you a really good thick yogurt. Let me show you how we're gonna make this. Now you do need to have an Instant Pot that has a yogurt setting. So the first thing we're gonna do is pour the entire container of Fairlife milk into our Instant Pot. Step number two, take some of your Greek yogurt, your Fahe Greek yogurt, and put it in there. And I usually put one or two spoonfuls. This is not an exact science. We're literally just using this for the cultures. After that, go ahead and give this a really good mix. And then finally, we're going to press the yogurt and then you wanna go eight to 10 hours. So I always just keep it on nine hours and that's it. And we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on and uh, I keep it on venting. You don't have to have this on the pressure cook. This will automatically start at the end of nine hours. We'll come back and I'll show you what to do. Okay, Anthony's brisket is done. Oh, look at that, that is just gorgeous. We're gonna go ahead and double check with a meat probe just to check it. And here, I'm not even looking just for temperature, I'm looking for doneness by doing a probe test. And what I wanna do is be able to put it in and have it just like go in like it's going into, you know, butter, like a warm butter. And you can just see, look at that. See how it just like slides right in? No resistance at all. That's what you wanna see. So this is done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it out He's got a couple more hours, but that's fine because this needs to rest for a while. So we're gonna pull it out and we're just going to wrap it up nice and loose. Okay, so I've got it out and I wanna preserve those juices that it's sitting in. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna loosely cover this whole thing with foil and then we're gonna stick it into the oven and allow it to rest and that'll help retain some of the heat in here as well. Okay, this bacon should be done. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this onto a cutting board. And now I'm gonna put this into the refrigerator. That'll help it so that it'll harden up or stiffen up and that'll make it easier to slice. You don't wanna try to slice it when it's this warm. So once again, lesson learned, you have got to check ingredients. We've had these in the past. We absolutely love them. They've always had really clean ingredients. So today I was on my way up to Jean Paul and Michelle and I grabbed the bag. And for some reason I decided, let me go back and look at the nutrition label. Like what if I eat the entire bag? They've changed the ingredients. Oh no. So the ingredients in these now are organic cauliflower, organic sunflower, uh, high oleic sunflower oil, which I'm okay with. That means that they actually manipulate it so it's got higher omega-3s. It's a little bit healthier than regular sunflower oil. Then it's got sea salt and maltodextrin. Wow. So now 
a serving of these, there's six servings in this bag, is 16 total carbohydrates with three grams of dietary fiber. Uh, so guess what we're doing with the nine bags of these that we have in the cabinet? Taking them back? They're going back to Costco. So even if there's a product that you buy and you've had it in the past and you know the ingredients are good. Check it again. Every once in a while, check it because we were talking about this on our you know supporter live stream. Sometimes these companies decide like, hey, can we make this cheaper? And they start cutting corners and they change up the formulations, they change up the ingredients, and it goes from a good product to a bad product. Is this like your rendition of the puppy bowl? Well, we are watching the puppy bowl, but we paused it so that you wouldn't miss any of it. Roscoe is like, there's a lot of people in this house <laughs> and I want more food. Can I please have more food? Okay, are you ready to eat? Yeah, what's for dinner? Well, you need to get the dog off of the bed. That'll probably take you an hour. Okay, first up, I snagged you a piece of the brisket. Thank you. You know what I was wanting. And there's a little bit of coleslaw there. Mm. And then I didn't show me making this, but Perfect. I don't know why. I just got the hankering for some jambalaya. Jambalaya. Because we had some more of that andouille sausage left over. So I ball. just, we got some chicken breast. I didn't use ground chicken. We used chicken breast and some shrimp, mm. the andouille sausage, a little bit of pepper onion. I'll put a recipe uh, link down below. The recipe is on our website. And... Oh, cauliflower rice. I put a little bit of cauliflower rice in the bottom. And in the air fryer, jalapeno poppers. Mm. Time for some jalapeno poppers. Look at these beauties. I may have to take like a halftime break because... Are you full already? I, I'm pretty full. So I, I think these are going to be dessert later on in the game. But yeah, I got pretty full. So now that the yogurt's done, all we're going to do is pour it into our yogurt strainer. I will leave a link for this down below. This makes things so much easier. Just get all of the yogurt into the strainer. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this up and stick it into the refrigerator overnight. Okay, it's the next morning and yogurt's done. Last thing to do is transfer it over into a container. And uh, this is pretty easy. Just simply grab a container, take your yogurt strainer and scoop it all out. And that is pretty much it. And you can see you have a nice, thick, thick yogurt here. Now, if you want a thinner consistency yogurt, there's two things you can do. Either A, don't strain it as long as I did, or B, you can take some of the whey and mix it back into the yogurt. Just be aware that that whey, that's where all the sugar and the carbs are. So the more you add back in, the more carbs you are adding into your yogurt. Now, if you wanna figure out how many carbs are actually in your yogurt, it's very simple. What you're gonna do is you're going to take the total carbs of the milk that you actually used, which is the Fair Life. And that's why we use Fair Life because it's got 50% less carbs than other milks. And then also add in the little bit of starter culture that you put in there. For me, it was a couple tablespoons. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to measure out how much whey we've removed. So I've got a four cup measure here. We'll go ahead and turn around so you can see the measurements. And all we're gonna do is just take the whey and we're gonna see how much we got. And we've got just over three cups. So we got about three cups of liquid whey out of the yogurt and each cup has approximately 12 carbs in it and it's all sugar. So then what we're gonna do is we take the total carbs that was in the Fairlife Milk and the Cultures, which is about 40 and we subtract the carbs from the whey. So that would be 36 carbs, which means this entire batch of yogurt here has about four carbs, but it's actually probably less because it's not an exact science. And you also don't know how much of the sugar did the cultures use when they were making the yogurt because that all gets eaten away as well. So you're basically looking at less than one carb per serving for this yogurt. So very, very simple. It's much easier than the original way we did it when uh, we were using nut milk bags and you had to strain it. This is super simple. Pour everything in your Instant Pot and then let it cook down and then strain it the next day and you're done. Now, if you're curious what you can do with this liquid whey, there's a lot of things you can do with it. People use it in their gardens. 
Uh, what we do is we give it to the chickens. The chickens absolutely love it. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this looks like a very Happy different... Happy Valentine's breakfast. Day. Happy Valentine's Day. So we're finishing up the Sunday vlog. We're not going to vlog today. Too much going on. Keto yeah. on the couch. I have a game. You've got to do church stuff because you ran home yesterday. Yeah. Because the kids were having their Super Bowl party. Look at this. And so you saw we made some yogurt. And you've been on a strawberry kick lately. I have been on a strawberry kick since I had one, like, well, I had a couple last week. Yeah, but the thing about strawberries, you have to be careful. Like, listen, it's still fruit. Right. There's still sugar in there. There's still carbs in there. So understand that, like, two strawberries is a serving, and it's a decent amount of carbs in there. So this is one strawberry on top of our yogurt. So good, but you cut it up really good. And I cut it up so you get a little bit of that taste. And then we have, on top of that, this stuff. And this people really ask good. us, like, what's a good granola? It's a great mix-in. Like in my whipped cream. Okay, well, so yeah. So this is a double shot of espresso. Because Anthony, for his party, made whipped cream because we have one of these whipped cream canisters. Mm. And I was so grateful because he made it keto style. He used stevia to yeah. sweeten it. Do I have a little bit of whipped cream on my face? No. So it's basically just a pint of heavy whipping cream and a teaspoon of vanilla. And then what you do is you add a few drops of stevia. You taste it. Is it sweet enough? Once it's sweet enough, then you pour everything in here. You put the charge in. And you've got whipped cream that you know doesn't have a bunch right. of chemicals in there. Yeah. And so we just kind of top the espresso with it. Mmm. Mm. It's just the right amount of sweetness. He did not Lion King it at the party. Nope. And guess Nobody what? Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Nobody knew there was no sugar in it. That's right. So back to the granola. So, yeah. So I, we got this at Sam's Club. And they have a few different flavors. They have a different flavor at Costco. This is the birthday cake flavor. And if you're curious, so here's why I like this particular company. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, dried coconut, erythritol, almonds, butter, which is made of cream, I hope, pecans, hazelnuts, sugar-free sprinkles, which were erythritol, tap tapioca starch, and coconut oil, and cellulose, stevia extract. We've had those like Just ones. Just to make them colorful. Yeah, those are like the ones that you get from Superfat or Perfect Keto. Right. Then we have whey protein concentrate, natural flavors, salt, and monk fruit extract. So super clean ingredients. A serving is a, a third of a cup, 160 calories, 14 grams of fat, 4 grams of protein, 10 total carbohydrates. Remember, it's all nuts. And then you have 2 grams of dietary fiber, and most of the carbs are actually your erythritol. And if you're curious, that's a serving. Perfect topping so for a, a, either yogurt or to put in a mix-in for an ice yes. cream. And you get a decent amount in a serving. You don't even have a half a serving on there. So it's wow. enough to give you a little bit of a crunch. In a little bite. bit of sweetness. So you don't have to add any sweetener to your yogurt if you don't want to. Now, I know a lot of people are going to ask, like, with the yogurt, do you, how do I get a vanilla flavor yogurt or a lemon flavor yogurt or something like that? And that's where you add in some extracts. After you've made the yogurt. So now you can mix in some extracts. What we would normally do is wait until you're going to have some. So I don't want to make an entire batch of a lemon yogurt, maybe yeah. one serving. So when we go to have a serving, add a couple drops of a lemon extract, or you can even get like the flavored stevias. Mm -hmm. you have, they have like the, the toffee one. The English toffee one is really good. And just put a couple drops in there, but do it after you actually make the yogurt. And then uh, coffee is two eggs and a tablespoon of butter for the entire pot. How did the yogurt come out? Can I have a little bite? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm not super hungry. Uh, it, it's I, a really pretty breakfast, to be honest, right? Mm. Like, sometimes it's nice to really enjoy something, like, r visually pretty. Because usually our, it looks like bacon and eggs. And I love bacon and eggs. But right. this looks feels festive. feels different. Well, it's been a while since we made the yogurt. And again, like I said when, when I was making it, first of all, use Fairlife. Okay? Yeah. Because it's 50% less sugar, which means 50% less carbs. Mm -hmm. You cannot use zero sugar milk, okay? So let's get that out there right now. We've said it a hundred times. You cannot use, if you have any of the Maple Hill milk like we do in the freezer, it won't work with that. It has to have sugar in it. So the Fairlife works really, really well. You can use the non-fat if you want a non-fat milk. You can use the 2%, which is what this was. And the only reason we're using that is because that's what they had at BJ's. Right. And then you can use the whole milk. 
You can add heavy whipping cream or you could not add heavy whipping cream. It's whatever you want with it. But other than that, it's super simple. But this here is just a reminder from the nice shirt that I got from Shauna. Thanks, Shauna. That says, all, all heavy, heavy whipping, whipping cream, cream has, has carbs. I love that she has like attributed it to you like you're wearing your shirt quoting yourself. That is like the funnest thing. Except for, I may have the funnest thing because Anthony sent me a figment shirt. And it wasn't a figment of my imagination. I'm actually wearing this shirt that I love so much. Thank you so much. So before we go do cute on the couch, I have a little something for you for Valentine's Day. No, you don't. Are you serious? It's just a little something. I've been trying to figure out what to get Aww. you. I was getting you a new stick it's vacuum, but I couldn't find one on sale. Yeah, but it's what it says. It says, it's Joshua 1.9. Be strong, be brave, be fearless. You are never alone. Thank you. That's a good reminder yeah. for us. Because sometimes we feel like that, don't we? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, we are going to end this vlog right here. And reapply your makeup. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we wanna say, I love you, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.